Could this be it? Yup, C500 Mark II. It's interesting how it says 2K and 4K, right? Cause pretty sure this camera can do 5.9K, I think. So I think I got a special cause it came with a free one of these cards, but dang, look at that. 1700 megabytes per second read speed and 1400 megabytes, not megabits, megabytes. So that is freaking fast. Manual here. Let's see what we got here. We got our strap right there. Monitor. Ooh, this is actually a little bit bigger than the C300s, I believe. This must be the bracket for the monitor. Cables that are extremely expensive. Top handle, battery charger, battery. Ooh, it gives us a bigger one. It gives us the A60, which is nice. I believe the C300 came with the A30, which is much shorter in lifespan, but these pack a lot of juice. Microphone mount, and here's the beast itself. Oh yeah. I like that there's the XLR inputs just built in right onto the body. So you got your input one and input two. It is beautiful. It is modular. So you can see that it accepts some sort of module right there. Oh man, it feels nice. I mean, this is an exciting camera because not only is it full frame, but it's cinema quality and dual pixel autofocus. Built in NDs, you can swap this out with a PL mount. I mean, it checks off a lot of the boxes that I've been wanting, so. I'm excited for this thing. Let me just try to build this out real quick. Oh, hi, Kita. You wanna say hi to everybody? Say hi. No, over there. No, seriously though, you gotta get out of here. I gotta I gotta get some work done. Looks like it's got a hot shoe and a quarter inch thread up here. So this just locks into the hot shoe. So slide it in and lock it down. Now remember this mount from the C200. I also remember it being a little bit tricky. Why am I sitting on the ground, by the way? A random ass, I, I don't know. My studio is really messy right now, and I was like, you know, I don't really feel like cleaning this up. Let's just, I'm just gonna film it on the ground outside of the studio. <laughs> I mean, this is a puzzle on its own. Pretty sure this goes up front. I think this monitor fits in right here. Looks like I need an Allen wrench. Did they, did they give us one? They did not. Got some. Don't you love it when you have a bunch of different Allen wrench sizes and the first one you try fits perfectly? Yes. It looks like it's just a single cable that goes from the monitor to the camera. Before, it used to be two. I think it was one for audio, one for video. Uh, since audio is like just built into the body here now, I think that's why there's only one cable. So I like that. Less setup time. Oh, snap. It turns out they do give you these Allen wrenches. I just didn't see it. All right, cool. So yeah, you could just build it out with stuff that comes in the box. Let me throw this on the charger and we'll come back. Maybe by that time I would be done cleaning up the studio so we can film in there. It looks so unprofessional just sitting I'm like, what am I doing? with my life. All right, there we go. See, I cleaned up. I look all professional again, happy now. Got a battery pack charged up, so let's fire her up. Oh yes, of course. The time and date. We are in Los Angeles, January 4th, 2020. 2020, it's hard to say 2020. I still feel like it's 2019. So here she is with everything that kind of came with the box here. Still kind of getting used to this monitor. It's actually kind of nice because you can kind of rotate this up like this and almost use it like a how you would use a red. You can kind of flip it this way, almost like a vlog angle. It doesn't perfectly line up right there, but check it out. See, you'd be able to monitor yourself, but mostly I think it's meant to just be used like this. I mean, with a shoulder pad and the lens right here, this would feel pretty good like this. I am liking this screen though. It is a tad bit bigger than that C300 Mark II. Probably gonna be making a lot of C300 Mark II comparisons because that's a camera I have a lot of hours on. I still don't know exactly the best way to kind of transport it though. There's no real spot for it to kind of fold. Maybe kind of like this, sort of. I don't know. It doesn't really see it in anywhere nicely. That was one thing that was nice about the C300. It kind of closed into itself so it can stay safe during transport. But here it just kind of flops around. It's nice and flexible in where it can go, but uh, yeah, no perfect like storage spot, right? Let's try slapping a lens on here. It comes with an EF mount, but you could swap it out for a PL mount with just a couple screws. You don't have to commit to one or the other necessarily, so that's a big plus. Oh, okay, there we go, wow. This is looking good, actually. Now, this isn't gonna be a full in-depth review. That's gonna have to come after I have a few weeks with it. This is gonna be my main camera around Thailand, so that should give me plenty of different, you know, shooting conditions to work in. And you can clearly see that it's a full-frame sensor, you know, kind of like the EOS R that I'm filming on here, but it just has this extra layer of sharpness and clarity, just so much better dynamic range, just right off the bat. So yeah, so far, so good. I'm so excited to see what the footage out of this is gonna look like. Let me just go film some random stuff.
Man, we got like no light left, unfortunately, but here, just quick side-by-side -side shot. All right, so I'm basically gonna try to match this camera with this. So I'm just gonna start off in Rec. 709. So here's how the EOS R looks, and here's how the C500 Mark II looks. Now let's look at the flat color profile. So here's how the EOS R looks in C-Log, and here's how the C500 Mark II looks in C-Log 3. Now that's all the experimenting we could do as of right now, but trust me, tons more footage coming with this guy. But anyhow, thank you, Carrie, for helping me model. I was like, Carrie, the sun's dipping in and I need you to be in the shot. And she's like, I just came back from the gym. You know how earlier I said the A60 battery lasts forever? Now this camera definitely draws a whole lot more power, so maybe not so much with this camera. Camera. Just looking at it on this teeny little monitor, I can already see a big difference from footage I've seen before. So this is going to be cool. Man, I can't tell you how excited I am to shoot with this thing. So let's look at the body real quick. Now, all this is looking very familiar if you used any of the Canon cinema cameras. We got our ND filters here. It looks like we got a two stop, four stop, and six stop filter built in here. Magnification to punch into your frame, focus peaking, zebra, wave four monitor, that's WFM, LUTs iso slash gain shutter speed and you can toggle slow motion right here it's a little button there to light up all the buttons white balance custom white balance record button got a dial here and your one shot autofocus slot select to choose between our different memory card slots right there that's where our cf express cards go we got two of them and also a slot for an sd card media to see your playback and then right now it's on camera but you can lock it in or just turn it off right there Ooh, check this out. If we pull off our top handle here, look at that. Six quarter inch screws right here. Actually, seven and eight. That's going to give us all kinds of mountain options up here, huh? I guess if you don't want this top handle, you can just pull this monitor off here. It's a quarter inch on the bottom of the monitor. So you could just, you know, no-go arm it up here. Make this even smaller or for gimbals. So that's cool. And again, you don't need this handle up here for your audio because on the C300 audio XLR inputs were on the handle here. I like how it feels with this top handle on here. So I'll leave it on for now. And with this cable here, you want to make sure that you clip the excess cable right up into here. If you don't, this thing is gonna end up floating in front of your lens, you're gonna blow a take. Back here, we have function number 12, so we can customize that button. We got our joystick and menu and cancel, so this is where we're gonna be dialing all our settings. I think it's just a repeat of what we got over here. So depending on your setup, you can navigate over here or over here. So yeah, so far so good. I love that all your functions that you're gonna be accessing frequently, right here labeled clear as day. Now let's check out the right side here. We got our two SDIs right here, monitor SDI out. There's your port for time code right there. And of course, our two XLR inputs with phantom power. That makes this camera an awesome documentary camera. And then you got your DC in, that's a four pin XLR right there. Got your remote A, HDMI, mic and headphone jack. So looks like you could probably plug in even just like a small little Rode video mic or something like that, huh? And then you got your very standard input one, input two, line mic and phantom power mic. Look at this, air intake and exhaust fan. That thing's massive. Keep this camera cool. It's a powerful camera, so I imagine it'll need it. Got a USB port right there. That's a mini. And what is that? I have no idea what that is, but uh, let's cut this part out because I want people to think I know what I'm talking about. Up front, we got our one shot autofocus. And what's over here? Our push auto iris. Ooh, that could be convenient on run and gun shoots. You know, you change exposure real quick. You press that and it generally gets you in the ballpark. And then you could just kind of dial the rest in there. Handle pops off a must-have feature if you're gonna throw this on a gimbal. Your focus guide, another joystick, and a wheel here. I think by default this is your iris control. Another record button. So yeah, loving the body, not much new here. It just kind of works. Can be a little bit overwhelming when you first see all these buttons. You go, oh, I'm intimidated, but you know, you learn what everything does and it's easy. All right, let's dive into this menu here. Love these cameras because they're pretty self-explanatory. There's usually not too much in here that'll make you scratch your head, right? I hate those cameras where there's like so many any options you're like I've never heard of this before but C300 and C500 Mark II looks like it's pretty much the same and it's gonna be pretty straightforward if that's the case so iris mode all right I got a manual lens in here let me put on a, a Canon lens on here so I can kind of see some of these options activated let's go with the 16 to 35 f 2.8 Iris mode, still grayed out. This function is not compatible with the current lens. I just talked about how I know what everything on this menu is. Literally the first thing that pops up is iris mode. What's that mean? Let's try this one, 100 millimeter macro. This function is not compatible 
with the current lens? What? I don't get it. What is iris mode like? I can adjust my eye. I'll know this for sure by the time I get my in-depth review, okay? That's why this video is titled Unboxing the C500, okay? Means I unboxed it. I don't know shit about the camera yet. <laughs> oh, extended ND range. Let me see what happens if I pop that on. So earlier we had an ND of 246. Oh, okay. So this allows me to go to eight and 10 stops. Now if we go to eight stops. The number of ND filters used has changed. So double check your focus. So it must be stacking different layers of glass and you could get up to 10 stops. So that's dope. Man, I love having these ND filters in the body. Much prefer that over having it up here on front of the lens where it causes all kinds of glares and crap. I mean, 10 stops, that's pretty dang good. You'll rarely need to ever go past that. So you can leave your filters at home, boys. Shutter mode, angle, yes, please. Or you could change it back to speed. So, you know, if you're coming from a DSLR land, you're used to shutter speeds, like 1 50th of a second, 1 48th of a second. But I like angle. That way we just put it at 180 degrees and you never have to think about your shutter speed. When you change your frame rates, it's always going to perfectly match it at basically double your frame rate. Auto black balance oh you got like chromatic aberration correction i have it all off right now but we'll see if i ever see a shot with a lot of chromatic aberration i might pop it on and see how it does digital image stabilization that's something i'm curious to try out custom picture we got our 709 log 2 log 3 i'll probably be shooting in log 3 it's not a huge fan of c log 2 it's a little bit difficult to grade i mean it's supposed to be like the rawest cleanest one but you know c log 3 looks really good and it's easier to grade so i prefer that all right sensor mode we're on full frame perfect you could also crop into super 35 especially if you're using cropped in lenses and super 16 if you want to go to a higher frame rate i believe so on full frame looks like our max frame rate is 60 and at super 35 highest frame rate still 60. And then if we go to super 16 cropped in mode so that's going to be in tight ah that opens up the option of going 120 frames per second that is still one thing that i want to see out of these cameras is some like really good high frame rate options and then raw which is going to be nice because that's going to give us access to what 5.9k uh, up to 60 frames per second but for now i think xf avc is going to be plenty for what i'm trying to do and that's only going to give me 4k instead of you know 5.9k but honestly that that's plenty and it's 10 bit so loving that you got your options to you know how you want to record onto your memory cards relay recording means you fill up one card and it automatically switches to the second one or double slot recording writing to both cards at the same time just to get that super redundancy i don't know if i need that i'm probably just going to keep it on relay recording for now Ooh, some options for our monitor so if i need to brighten up this screen we're filming outside and the sun's blasting i can pop this up and that looks pretty bright i have to test this out in bright sunlight ah so here's our assistance functions so you know stuff like focus peaking that's going to help out a lot magnification false color this is where we can kind of adjust things zebra i personally never use zebra but i do like to use wafer monitor sometimes or false color so i think i could swap out number three which is zebra for false color oh man you can customize all 15 of these buttons actually that's awesome i mean i think they did a pretty good job laying out all these buttons to you know most frequently access buttons but you know if there's something that you don't really use on here you could always customize that so that's cool. And check this out. I am now vlogging on the C500 Mark II. It's incredibly heavy. Anyways, guess where I am? Let's go outside. And here we are. Oh my God, so bright. Luckily, ND's built in, saving the day. What are we, four stops? Let's go to six stops. Ah, there you go, looking pretty good. And Q plane. Yep, thanks for ruining my audio plane. But uh, yeah, check it out. How's the footage look? I'm going from sun into shade. Yeah, we still got some pretty good dynamic range. So. It's not so bad, huh? It's kind of silly to be vlogging on this camera, but it's actually not that insanely bad. I still got my front facing display. I got autofocus, super heavy, and a mic on top. But yeah, this is gonna be super fun. Man, I'm still not used to cars driving on the other side of the road. We drive on the left side. And like, I just keep walking into traffic, checking the wrong side of the street. Not gonna lie though, this is looking pretty good. Should this just be my like main vlog camera? But now everyone's just staring, he's like, why is he recording himself? Why is that camera so big? This is uncolor graded with just a standard color profile. It looks pretty good. I'm just gonna carry this around everywhere with me. But yeah, super excited to be here in Thailand for another plane. Do you really have to fly that close to me? Autofocus seems to be tracking pretty well. But yeah, super excited to be here for the next two weeks. We were riding around in scooters, like this one's mine and we actually crashed the scooter yesterday. So if you wanna see the vlog for that, click right there.
boom, you can follow our journey in Thailand on the vlog channel. So yeah, anyways, my arm's getting incredibly tired and people are really looking at me a lot. So I'm getting kind of self-conscious. I'm gonna cut now. All right, see you guys later.